Good afternoon and thank you for attending our presentation. Today we are going to be talking about burnout and project management. Paul and I will be demystifying the theory behind burnout, covering how to assist someone with burnout as well as our own personal experiences. Now this is a safe environment given the topic and while we encourage openness it is not a necessity. A uh, quick introduction for myself, I'm Tom Dutton, I'm currently a P3M consultant at Nova Systems. I studied BA History and MSc Project Management both at the University of Southampton and I wrote my master's thesis on burnout and social support in project management to explore how soft skills can be used to increase engagement in the project environment for which I was awarded distinction, Dean's Award for Academic Excellence, as well as being selected for an APM uh, Postgraduate of the Year finalist in 2020. And since entering the workplace, I wanted to continue my passion for this topic alongside my day-to-day -day work. So I've found the People Interest Network a really good community to operate in. Cheers, Tom. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name's Paul Fisher. Um, I'm currently a principal P3M consultant working uh, at Costain. I've uh, been there for about the last two and a half years, but prior to that, I spent 32 years working at, at BAE Systems. Um, like, like Tom, this is a subject that um, I have a great interest in, um, something um, mental health in particular, I suppose, in relation to the workplace is something that I've got a, a very, a, a very great passion for. Uh, something I care deeply about and um, when Tom suggested this as, as, as a subject we could present about I was you know really interested to do that and uh, I've been, been a member of the People Interest Network for about the last sort of nine or ten months um, it's, and it's been a really interesting experience so uh, thanks everyone for listening to our presentation this afternoon. Grant so on to uh, what is burnout now I, I found burnout now, it's quite rightly used as a buzzword to cover all areas of workplace stress. However, when understanding a topic, I think it's important to understand and explore all the latent variables um, in the phenomenon. The definition most commonly held in academia is on screen at the moment. Most succinctly put, burnout is defined as the erosion of a positive state of mind. And while this is true, there are two different and distinct schools of thought regarding burnout. An early exploration of the topic, European scholars reduce burnout to a single dimension, exhaustion, which is something that we most commonly associate with feeling burnt out. And this view is held by the Copenhagen Burnout Inventory as well as the Oldenburg Burnout Inventory. However, this research placed a high ontological value on subjective research techniques, therefore not exploring the full picture. Um, the Maslach Burnout Inventory, which is considered to be the gold standard, uh, com states that burnout is comprised of three separate but interlinked dimensions, depersonalization, reduced perceived accomplishment, and exhaustion. One does not need to experience all three in order to say that they're burnt out. However, if one does, it is an extreme case. One important aspect to consider in the MBI uh, is that burnout dictates that stress as a psychological state is not perceived as an end unto itself, but rather a cause of a more heart harmful psychological conditions such as burnout. That is to say that burnout is the result of extreme stress. Uh, the three burnout dimensions on screen were explored using in-depth interviews which were later confirmed using statistical analysis, therefore using a mixed method approach to create what is now seen as the gold standard in burnout research. The result is a clear ontological position based upon observed and scientific methods, thus objectifying the phenomenon in order to attain a valid and reliable concept of burnout. And the MBI has been used in the study of burnout by numerous researchers across myriad of industries and was in the World Health Organization International Classification of Diseases um, as the definition of the phenomenon. <clears throat> and additionally, this view posits, uh, it belongs to the positive psychological movement, meaning that it forms a dichotomy. Therefore, Maslach's view is that the opposite of burnout is being engaged in one's work, which is a far better place to be for the individual and exploration and this was explored briefly uh, in the context of project management by a conceptual paper in 2017, showing how new um, the exploration of burnout is in the project context. And onto the causes of burnout. Just, just while um, Tom, uh, I've, I've, I've dropped a question into the uh, into the chat. Um, and I guess what, one of the things we, we would be interested in understanding is just to get a perspective as to what you know what 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 single word might you all used to, to describe burnout um just to get a little bit of feedback from you and um, so we have, we have dropped that in the chat if you want to if you want to give a perspective on what word you think you might use to describe burnout possibly from your own experience or or just based on what tom's just said 
we'd be interested to get a, a view on that. So please do drop that um, into the chat. I think you can all access the chat. So, uh, can you all access that? Yeah. What single word would you use to describe burnout? So let's have a quick look at that before we move on to these uh, these root causes. Frazzled. These these are the words we're getting Tom back. So I'd just be interested on in your perspective. So detached, which is an interesting one around the, what you've just said about uh, engagement, exhaustion, stress, frazzled, unwell, um, weariness. Exhaustion or apathy, depression, That's an interesting one. yeah, apathy. I don't yeah. know if there's anything you, you wanted to, uh, to uh, just in terms of that definition that you, you gave before, Tom. Um, are, are there any of those particular words that you'd, you'd pick out? I mean, exhaustion or apathy, I think, for example. Yeah, I, I, th I think they're all valid. I mean, that's why I really like the definition there, just the erosion of a positive state of mind, I, I think, lends itself, um, to the uniqueness that one might experience through burnout. I, I, I think as well, the, the dimensions there cover um, any any feeling that you might have towards being burnt out as well, that it, it, it is a unique experience and it's not quite uh, everyone experiences the same feeling when feeling burnt yeah. out as well, uh, which is so important to recognize, especially when it comes to the causes and exactly what um, might be best in order to get out of a, a burnt out situation and feeling more engaged in their work. Uh, a lot of people mentioned exhaustion, uh, Tom, as well. And I think that, that you know, as you say, um, everybody um, experiences this in their own personal way. But I, I guess ultimately exhaustion is, is probably, it says at the bottom there, doesn't it? An exhaustion, it being one of the three dimensions, that probably is one of the biggest manifestations of, of burnout, I think, isn't it? Without a doubt, definitely, and by far the most common um, is is something that can easily come about when feeling overstressed at work. Cool. So uh, we just had a question as well in the in the chat, Tom. It might just be worth pulling that out um, now rather than waiting till later. So it says, "How many different burnout indices are there?" Um, you've obviously mentioned those those three there, Tom. Yeah. Are, are, they, are they the three that you specifically picked, or are there, are there more than that? Yeah, I, I, from my research they're they're the three uh core ones the the copenhagen and oldenburg were sort of discarded early on for the reasons that i, I said about um when you look into the questions of what the maslap burnout inventory asks if you do sort of any workplace surveys um you know the the is it gallant or something along those lines or, or well-being in the workplace a lot of the questions that are in there are shared in the maslap burnout inventory um uh, just because it's it's seen as, as quite commonplace and the best metric to use when measuring things. They might tweak words here and there, um, because I think it is a copyrighted thing, so that's a bit sneaky from those companies. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'd say uh, that the core one is the Maslap Burnout Inventory, but um, it, I, I guess it depends on what rigor someone wants to use in order to understand their workforce better or, or, or design an intervention in a certain way or from a purely academic perspective. Brilliant. Thanks, Tom. So if you, if you do have any more questions, just please do drop them into the uh, into, into the question area. Um, we, we can see your responses, actually, just for those of you uh, who are wondering. Um, if you put things in the chat, I think you can all see them, but if you put them into the questions area, only myself and Tom can see them, by the way, just, um, just to let you know. All right, so um, I'll move on now and talk about some of the causes uh, of burnout. Thanks, Tom. And as I say, just do keep asking questions as we as we go along. Um, I mean, j just briefly, I, I will refer. Um, Tom just mentioned actually that, that, that the APM has commissioned a report on, on the subject of um, the well-being of project professionals, and particularly in relation to burnout in project professionals. And there, there is a report on, on the APM website about about this. It, you know, it's, it's, it's actually quite detailed. It's quite in depth, and I think Tom and I possibly think it probably focuses maybe more on the negative side of things than the positive but but it but it particularly you know it says project based work has long been characterized as frenetic fast paced and dynamic project professionals typically encounter high expectations and severe pressure to deliver projects on time and within budget and to reconcile changing expectations of scope due to dynamic factors 
So, I mean, I guess, you know, we're all um, members of the APM and I guess we're, we're, we're probably all um, have experienced that kind of uh, that, that kind of situation in our projects. So, you know, what 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 can lead to uh, to burnout? So these, these are some of the examples. I won't go into the nth degree of detail about about all of them, but let's just um, touch on a few of them. So I, I guess firstly, I'll, I'll, I'll turn to lack of support uh, and that possibly, you know, might align and, and ally with with a toxic workplace culture um, I'm, I'm very lucky I guess I think certainly the places that that, that, that I've worked in um, have uh, have been very supportive you know they've, they've, they've had a real eye on individuals mostly um, you know they've, they've looked out for people they've had mechanisms in place things like employee assistance programs and what have you but, but I guess if you're in an environment where you, you feel there isn't support mechanisms in place um, you know possibly where you don't feel supported directly by a line manager and therefore that can be a very um, you know a very individual and personal thing that can lead to burnout so you know lack of support can be a really key thing um, relationships you know if you um, find yourself in a relationship at work that you find to be very very difficult that can lead to burnout so let's say you've got a, a colleague who you find it quite difficult to get on with and um, somebody that you, you know that you don't see eye to eye with but you have to work with on a regular basis that that can be a real difficulty and you know can lead to burnout I, I guess the most important relationship in any organization is that between the individual and their line manager and, and I guess I would probably turn to that as specifically being the relationship that, that's the most important one. If that's a relationship that's not, not that's, that's not working, that can very easily, you know, lead to burnout. Unclear expectations. I think um, we're not always clear, I guess, what we expect um, from, from people. And, and um, when there's when there's a disconnect between those two things i mean you know let's say what an individual what an employee's expectations are of their role and and, and that's out of kilter let's say with, with with other people and particularly with again with a line manager and um, that can cause um stresses in the workplace and that that can ultimately lead lead to burnout as well uh, and another, i think one of the biggest things and maybe we'll come on to this again a, a little bit later on and um, tom and i were just discussing earlier today when we were preparing for this um work-life imbalance and, and, and possibly since the pandemic um you know i guess a lot more of us are working from home um, and and it's really difficult to create that that formal barrier between the workplace and our uh, our, our personal lives and and i think you know maybe people feel a bit more um you know maybe feel it a bit more necessary to be present at work and you know to 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 to, to, to bleed work into, into your into your personal life Personally, I haven't actually. I've managed to make a, a real disconnect between those two things, but I'll, I'll talk about that a bit later on. But you know, may, maybe in this in this new world that we're all working in online, it, you know, that that whole work life imbalance has increased, uh, and that's an area we need to we need to look at. But, and, and it also relates to isolation as well. And I know that's something that people do feel um, in the new world of work, in the new world of online work. You know, people do feel isolated um, as well. Uh, and finally, job insecurity, you know, um, hopefully, you know, that's not something that, that many people do, do do experience. But, you know, there are organisations where, you know, people feel that the, necessarily the job isn't for life. You know, maybe maybe the, the, the organisations are struggling. So, again, that can be an area, you know, where um, people feel feel stress uh, and, and ultimately that, that can lead to burnout as well. So there's lots of different things that lead to burnout. And as Tom said previously um it's a very very personal thing you know it, it very very much depends uh, you know on your own your own personal context and your own personal um, environment okay so i'm just going to tom i'm just going to quickly look at the um um questions in the uh, in the yeah, chat uh, so yeah misdiagnosed demotivated for burnout result, resulting in in wrong action being taken so somebody's said you know sometimes people may, may be um, I guess what, what the, the individual here is saying is that uh, people can be perceived as being demotivated um, and, and that's not necessarily the case, you know, and I, I guess the point being that everyone has a different, um, you know, different approach, a different personality. Not everyone comes across as being, you know, extrovert or whatever. And I suppose sometimes, you know, people can, can, can have their own perception about people's motivation. Tom, I don't know if you've got a view um, on that one. Yeah, I... I... 
I think that's that's a very interesting point. For the the first thing that springs to mind for me would be, um, it, it's interesting to find something that you're you're truly passionate about and, and can invest everything into, especially in in the workplaces. It's it takes a lot of um, time and process to to delve into different industries and explore different avenues of thought. Um, you know, I, I remember when I uh, graduated university thinking that I wanted to be in the startup space and, and that was my passion at university and then realized that the the scope for me to operate and it wasn't wasn't quite there yet whether that was sort of lack of experience to be able to do that or or whatever it just meant that there was that misalignment that meant I was I was taking on a lot of stress there yeah yeah thank you Tom and by the way I just want to say we're, we're not I'm not reading out the names of the people who are uh, asking these questions because I think you know it's only fair that, that, that people are able to to remain uh, anonymous in, in, in the things that they say if you wish me to, to say your name then um, then just d- please do say so when, when you ask your question I think um, another person has said Tom um, I think it's important to distinguish that burnout isn't just a product of being busy and having a lot on. That's yeah. a really good point. And it's it, th- th- that person goes on to say burnout can come about by feeling unproductive and undervalued. So uh, this individual likes the erosion of a positive state of mind definition. So that's a really good point, isn't it? It's not just about too much yeah. work. Sometimes, you know, if, if you're undervalued and, and, and it says that in the middle there, doesn't it? That, that undervalue aspect, you know, that, that, that can really bring burnout on as well. I don't know, again, Tom, if you've got something you'd like to say 100%, about that. Yeah, if, if you're not getting the work that you feel reaches your potential, there's that lack of met- motivation for whatever reason there. That I, I think that causes a real internal conflict between what one feels that they're capable of and, and the means to do it. You can't just... Um, be productive to no end you know it has to be useful and, and feel that you're getting something out of it which is quite an interesting uh, point in the sort of information economy that we work in um you know we, a lot of people don't make something or have something physical at the end of the day that they could show as the the effort of their labor which again is is an interesting one um yeah you know the extent to which someone can feel proud of an excel spreadsheet uh could be up for debate but you know it, at, you, at least if you make something you have something to feel you've got the hard hard effort out of um your toils yeah. without trying to sound like a pseudo intellectual here tom because i'm from blackpool <laughs> i am from blackpool but um you know it's, you, you go back to the you know good old maslow's hierarchy of, of needs and you know i guess mm-hmm. you know self self-actualization you know it's kind of almost like number one isn't it and i think i guess that question relates to that doesn't it is it, you know if you don't feel like the, the work that you're doing has a purpose and you know has has some useful outcome then then that that can actually lead to burnout can't it without a doubt yeah and I, I guess that that really interlinks into sort of the overlaps between burnout and uh the nature of project management as, as you alluded to paul the um apm well-being and project management survey does really highlight how how these different aspects of project management do create stressful environments. For me, the the interesting ones on the screen there, conflicting commitments, I, I'm sure as many of us do, working in matrix organisations where you might have to report to one or two different people, um, possibly more, as well as externally, can really cause a conflict of, of commitments and trying to balance and keep those plates spinning. And then adding into that um, personal life and, and the work-life balance, which is perhaps something that we didn't touch on uh, loads in, in the causes of burnout, but it, that that is something that is um, it, it can be quite difficult to to grasp and is unique to project organisations as as well as um, expectations of state stakeholders. I, I think um, take agile project management for example, where you've got the time um, as a constraint and the budget as a constraint, but you don't exactly know what you're going to get out of of the project at the end. Uh, the unless there's clear expectations that are shared between everyone, that can be really difficult to negotiate um, what someone perceives that they're going to receive at the end or what the team feels that they're capable of and aligning those values. Uh, you can see that the, the misalignment can cause uh, there to be additional stress in, in there. And finally, the, the pluralist nature of, of project management, you know, we, we it's often characterised as multi-hatted or, or you know you take on different roles and no two days are the same are, are 
terms that are often flung out in interviews. It's these things that that mean that the the dynamism and the fast paced mode of operation does mean that there's a hell of a lot more of an overlap uh, between burnout and the very nature of project management. And, and in reading the um, APM wellbeing survey, it, I, all of this isn't isn't a negative to say that um, project management conduces stress. It's, it's to say that there needs to be more research and more time thought on how, how can we take the research that we've done in business as usual and convert that into project management in order to create longevity in the project workforce and, and continue to maintain it to be something that is a mode of driving change in organizations and is, is, is the go-to on how to explore new options. Great, thanks, Tom. I, th I think uh, another couple of questions have come through, Tom, and, it, and it, it's actually interesting um, that, that people are, are pulling more on the, um, almost like the, the, the lack of motivation, the, the, you know, the undervalued element than necessarily the, the, the too much work aspects that people might associate yeah. with them. So let me, let me just read a couple of these things to you, Tom, that people have said, uh, and um, be interesting to get your perspective on them. So um, an individual has said, um, I think job insecurity is a big driver for burnout. Um, you know, if, if you're to raise an issue um, about the about your workload or responsibilities, people can perceive it as a performance issue. So if you you know if if you raise, you put your hand up and say, look, I haven't got enough to do. Um, I think that person's saying, then you know people can say, well, you know, you must be uh, you know you're lazy mm. or, or something along those lines. So you know that that can be a perception, can't it, of people, and that that can cause burnout. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent agree there. Or oh, too, yeah. And, uh, sorry, I, I, the, the individual saying there. So, so if you've got too much. Uh, pardon me, you know, you've got too much to do, um, you've been overloaded, you know, unre back to the point of, of the middle point on, on there, Tom, uh, expectations of stakeholders, you know, if you can't cope because you've got too much to do and it's unreasonable, you, you know, people think you can't cope. And that's that's just not, that, that is not a fair a fair way to yeah. be, is it? It's, it's, it's an interesting point. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a view that I share, but I, I have heard people say that they, they think that... Um, stress can be a badge of honor um that is to say to say that you're stressed in the workplace is something to be proud of which i can see the appeal there but it's also you know you, you don't want to burn yourself out and, and ruin the longevity just for the sake of of, of wearing that badge um yeah it, it, it is yeah. a very interesting point yeah, I think like, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people will relate to, you know, stress is useful for a period of time, isn't it? And everyone's got a different threshold. And I, I will talk about that in my, in my own experience of it. But it almost Without goes back to the, 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 you're too young, Tom, to remember, but the, the, the 1980s films where they used to talk about lunch being for wimps and things like that. <laughs> and some, somebody's asked, what are the ways to deal with lack of workload and projects being cancelled? I mean, I'll, I'll just give a response to that initially. And, mm. and I guess one thing that you can do, you know, in, in times when you've not got a specific commission or a specific piece of work to do, you know, is maybe to think about your own development and, and you know, look for things to do that, you know, can help to uh, progress your, your own organisation. You know, maybe get involved with the APM, you know, like like myself and Tom do with the, with the people interest network and, 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 you know, maybe put some of your attention into, into doing some of that stuff. And, you know, just look at your own development plan and think about, you know, what can I do to improve myself as a, as, as a project manager so that when, you know, when the next big job does come along, you, you know, you, you're even better prepared for that. I don't know if you've got any views on that, Tom. Um, I, I think from personal experience, whenever I've had um, periods on the bench, uh, however brief they may be, it, the the APM people in Chess Network is something that I found really useful to get involved in and and sort of maintain a, a passion a, a passion project that's something that I won't necessarily cover in my day to day work. Which I, I I think gaining an understanding of a topic like this is just as valuable to an organisation as any other um, hard skill, whether that's coding or or knowing how to do powerpoints better, for example, or anything like that. It's it's also just really interesting and, and good to meet new new people as well um but yeah that that 100 percent can be a really interesting one and i guess i'm lucky to to work in an organization that encourages that as well yeah and, and, same and, yeah. Here, yeah yeah we are just just one final one tom and we'll come back to some of the other questions um later on but um 
so somebody said, I, I, I agree with the unproductive comment. I often know I can deal with so much more, but I'm put on smaller projects, which, le which leads to job insecurity and feeling undervalued. In turn, this makes me unmotivated mm -hmm. and makes me really dislike project management when actually I know this is what I love doing. You know, again, that it's the same theme, isn't it? And that's it's, it's a real pity, actually, when pe organisations don't realise that an individual's in that situation and that there's so much more they've got to offer, isn't it? And I suppose that, that that's the whole point of this, isn't it? That organisations po probably need to understand that not having enough to do and being undervalued is as big, um, you know, a, a driver of burnout as is having too much work to do. Yeah, yeah. Just feeling that one can't achieve their potential through the work that they're doing is, um, again, I, it all comes down to the misalignment of... Um, sort of internal desires and and what's what's being offered um that was highlighted in the previous slide absolutely so there's a few more questions and we'll come back to them uh, a little bit later we're not ignoring you don't worry we'll come back to those questions uh, a little bit later so just maybe just carry on to the the next slide tom exactly. thank you very much indeed um so yeah well i mean I, i'm you know i'm i'm a mental health first aider with it within costain um, and I know, Tom, you're a mental health first aider too, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that that's just, in some respects, it's a badge, right? It, you know, um, so what, you know, you might say. Um, I, I, I guess, you know, helping with burnout. So how, how can we help with this um, situation? Um, Organisations need to create the right environment, don't they? So, so, so that, that I think, in some respects, that's the most important thing. And, and when I say the right environment, they need to create a, 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 you know, the right environment that means people feel able to speak up when, when, when they're experiencing burnout. A little bit like the question earlier, where somebody said they were they were, they were overloaded, but they would be blamed for you know not being good enough at the job you know that's not the right attitude to take of course is it and may, may, maybe organizations need to think a little bit more about what the root causes of burnout are and to have you know things in place so they can recognize those equally as we've already said overwork and underwork so with co-workers you know hopefully you know you do have support networks in in your organizations and um, you know you, you hopefully people do feel able to speak openly about mental health issues or, or there are people that you can that you can go to but equally i suppose it goes it comes down to you as an individual if you do see somebody who's struggling you know if you're on a, a team's call and somebody who might normally be a bit more involved or, or engaged if that person is not speaking as much as usual then you know, grab them for a chat afterwards or, or try and get them into the office with you and have a, have a conversation with them face to face. It is surely it has to be more difficult in this online world that we've that we've created for ourselves post COVID. But, you know, th there is still the ability, hopefully, for people to go into the workplace and have, have a chat with each other. And organisations, and I think this, this relates back to a lot of what you've been saying, Tom, is about, you know, implementation of a well-being plan, thinking about a lot of those root causes that you've already referred to, you know, for, for well-being. Um, obviously, things like employee assistance programmes that a lot of businesses have, but but the biggest one, as I've said earlier, is creating that environment of, of, of openness, really. And then, you know, if you're a leader or a manager, you've got to avoid stigmatising language around mental health. You know, we can't have people saying, you know, well, you know, if, 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 if you can't cope with that volume of work, you, you're useless, you know, that or whatever. That, that's not that's not the mm. way to be. You know, we need to get the best out of our individuals and discourage the use of excessive overtime, discourage unreasonable workloads. And, you know, we've got to have that right that right work life balance in place. So I think there's lots of different things that we can all do to think about this and think about how um, how we can help ourselves uh, within our organisations. I don't know if there's anything you want to build on uh, any of that, Tom. Yeah, I, I think from um, a sort of co-worker's perspective, just be kind. Um, when, I, when I did my research, it's, it's hardly surprising that, that that was the biggest takeaway to most succinctly put 10,000 words into a short sentence is, is just be kind, which, you know, can go a hell of a long way. And, and for an organisation tailoring it to the needs of the individual as well, or at least allowing there to be the the freedom of, of movement for one to tailor their own well-being package to that. And the quality of it, I think, is is something that is um, definitely something that needs to be paid attention to, the sort of advent of um, appification of counselling services and stuff like that. I, I personally, having used some of them um, through, through health insurance, have, have found that 
it takes a lot to find um, the right the right medium, the right uh, source of counselling, and it is yeah. it is a trial and error process. That's not a criticism necessarily. It's it's no. that if you want to if you want to get to a better place, you know, um, unfortunately the work does have to be put in. And um, and from line managers, I, I think that's an interesting point. The um, discourage unreasonable workloads. Um, I must admit, I did write that intending for it to be sort of heavy on the getting people to work too much. But you know, as we've discussed openly in this call, the unreasonable workload could be window sitting duty or or making someone feel that they're not appreciated in the work that they're doing or, or being able to reach the potential that they know in themselves that they're, they're in. So I'd, I'd say it really does, in, you know, it should should encourage ma managers to understand exactly what their people want and and Absolutely. sort of tailor, tailor that to it and, and not not take favourites in it either. It's um, It's an interesting point for sure. And, and somebody said, somebody just pointed out, um, Tom, as well. So there's, there's, there's a great podcast called Seven Early Signs of Burnout and Seven Simple and Practical Ways to Heal and Recover. So if you can uh, remember those uh, those words, uh, I can maybe just copy and paste that into the into the into the uh, into the chat so you can all see it. I can't. Um, but anyway, so it's called Seven Early Signs of Burnout and Seven Simple simple and Practical Ways to Heal and Recover. So it goes through the different stages and helps you recognise the signs before you crash. So that, that might be useful for people to have a, uh, have a look at that. Cool. OK, so um, I think one of the things Tom and I discussed here, you know, without going into the nth degree of, of detail about this, I mean, when when you discuss subjects like burnout and 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 in relation to you know to mental health, you know, it's it's often good to to show, um, I suppose, a level of um, you know the fact that you you've experienced this yourself. And, and Tom and I did want to, you know to talk a little bit about our our own experience of, of this. I'm as you can probably tell, um, probably old enough to be Tom's dad. So I've been around, I've been around a bit I've been around a bit longer so I've, I've you know I've had longer I've, I've had longer than Tom to, to to experience some of this stuff but I, I, you know I have you know that's fair to say isn't it Tom um, but I, you know, I have experienced this stuff in in the past and um I, you know I've never been concerned about about sharing my experience because I think the more you know you can you can role model sharing experiences like this the more people perhaps will you know would, would share their own um, experience of this stuff so um. I'll talk a little bit briefly about about what what you know what my experience was. So, um, you know, I've, I've had some reasonably senior roles um, in, in in the past, and I think I basically, um, in relation to some of the things that have been said, just basically took on too much in a particular role I was doing. I had I had I had a heck of a role. You know, I was dealing with um, a significant um, size function in, in, in you know a pretty large business and there was lots of things going on and and it was also uh, during the pandemic I was I was trying to do a specific role trying to recruit a lot of people at the same time and then um, you know um, it just all basically got all too much to for me I, I was basically overwhelmed with the situation that I found myself in uh, and for me the, the way that manifests itself um, is it, through severe anxiety so it resulted in me having you know, severe anxiety, uh, and I just, um, I was in this very room that I'm in today, I got to my desk one day and I thought, that's it, I can't do it anymore. Uh, and I rang the employee assistance program for, my, for the business I was in at the time. Uh, and, um, you know, I had to take some time out, quite a significant time, you know, quite a few weeks off, off work. Um, I was well supported by my line manager and particularly by the organisation. You know, they recognise that people, this happens to people. So, so thankfully, I did, you know, you know, I didn't feel stigmatised about it. I didn't feel like, you know, um, I, I was going to be punished for it or anything like that, which is good. That's lucky for me. But, um, you know, and I did over time get better and it takes it takes time to get better when, when this kind of thing happens. So I think the, the, the key thing I always say, and I've had, you know, it has happened to me before as well, is I think you've got to recognise your threshold back to the point that Tom was making earlier and um, you've got to understand you know everyone's everyone's different you've got to know where your own threshold is for those things we've described um, that, that, that can lead to burnouts uh, and make sure you only overstep those thresholds for a certain period of time before you step back down below them again so that, that's my experience Tom I, I just hand back over to you yeah I, I guess uh, for me um, sort of burnouts uh, uh, <laughs> 
I guess I, I first experienced it when I was writing my dissertation. It was quite ironic um, to experience burnout while writing burnout. And, and that for me sort of manifested through the sort of hours in the library and, and sort of feeling that reduced perceived accomplishment from, you know, putting a lot of hours in and perceiving that I wasn't getting a lot out, obviously, as the gratification date was far into the future once it had been marked. Um, I, I guess more more recently, sort of the the balance of work life has been an interesting one for me. And I've been really lucky to be able to to seek the help of um, professionals through the resources that my company's enabled me to have, as as well as the N NHS. And I, I, I guess, as I was alluding to earlier, the, the journey of finding what works for me is something that um, was was interesting and you know I'm, I'm grateful to be able to know that at this stage of my career I guess and and the other point I wanted to make is is to feel enabled to have open and honest conversations with with you know not everyone but the people that that need to know that um, stuff's going on that that things are going a bit cattywampus and and you know you need to establish the right balance and able to feel engaged Thanks, Tom. Brilliant. What was that word again? Catty what? Catty wampus. A bit skew oh. with. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> love, love that word. Thank you, Tom. If you've got nothing else out of today's uh, um, <laughs> webinar, you've got a new word, I think. No, but you, word, seriously, yeah, that's... Yeah, you know, yeah the, the campaign starts now. Absolutely. I think I think um, you're right, Tom. And the, and the point being is sometimes it's as simple as saying, talk to someone, find somebody you trust, mm -hmm. have a chat with them, you know, and 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 um, you know that that can be really really um, positive. So let me just uh, I'm just going to pull out some of the the questions again from the chat, um, Tom, and um, possibly get your take on them. So somebody said, which is which is a fair a fair point. You know, a positive take on overloaded work is possibly you know you might call that a surplus of opportunities. So you know you, you may be able to choose. Um, which of those things you wish to take on, and uh, you know, and, and and focus on. So that's you know, that's quite a positive take on that, which is sometimes a good way of looking at things, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Everything's sort of opportunity cost as well, and and factoring in what what you feel you could get most out of is yeah. I mean, that could be a source of burnout in itself. Just the wealth of decisions to make. Absolutely. We've got we've got quite a few questions to run through, but if you have got other questions, by the way, guys, do drop them into the question area. Um, somebody said the window of tolerance is a key pictorial showing that we can have periods of under or over arousal. Being able to get back to within the window of tolerance is a key important longevity tool or else burnout, which kind of re I think relates um, to my threshold point, actually, making sure that, you know, mm -hmm. yes, you can sometimes go above or below your thresholds, but you can only stay there for a certain period of time. I don't know, you know what do you think about that, Tom? Yeah, I, I, I think that's that's completely full, uh, true. Um, yeah, too much stress is definitely a positive thing, but too much, as, as alluded to, does result in burnout as a, a psychological end to extreme stress. PMs, project managers need to feel safe about raising the point of being overloaded or unhappy with work, as you know, similar to the, the point raised earlier. But more often than not, project managers do not feel safe raising this to a manager or after a while, bosses stop listening. And, um, you know, again, that I suppose if we just refer back to, you know, the, the, the environmental situations that we need to see in organisations, how do we help with burnout? You know, we need to try and, and I suppose in some respects, you know, there's 137 change agents on this call today right there's the 137 of us who can go and make a positive difference in our organizations uh, and be open and honest uh, and to have positive and constructive conversations about this stuff so go and be please go and be the, the positive change agents in your organizations about burnout and about poor mental health because because that's what we need to do i don't know if you've got a view around that tom but you know how, how do you deal with with bosses who, who don't listen anymore I'm lucky that that's not something I've experienced. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting point, though. I, I would say go above them if that was the case. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. My, my lack of experience is really showing itself there. Or no, you, no, let's go not at all. Yeah, 
Yeah, and I think it's probably you know it's you know it's having the mechanisms in place for possibly at the point in, in your career. And there might well be some people like yourself, Tom, on the call today who are at an earlier stage of the career, and you, know, you might not have experienced some of this stuff, and hopefully you never will. But but you know, I suppose mm. building a level of resilience and just thinking about this kind of thing, you know, for when it might happen in the future, you know, that 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 that's a good thing to do, isn't it? Um, but please, you know, let's hope. 136 change advocates on on the call. Let's let's go and be the change we want to see in the world. Uh, questions: Should organisations build in awareness of burnout and remedies for it into their values? Tom, does that how does that sit with your research and your PhD? I, I would say one one hundred percent. Yeah, that that seems like something that a reasonable organisation should do. Just to uh, the the another core takeaway. By, by studying social support in um, project management, I wanted to use the most abundant resource that an organization has, which is not money, but the people that operate within it. So if you can, as a coworker, understand that offering emotional support, you know, it doesn't have to be anything elaborate, but showing individualized consideration for someone would help alleviate stresses and, and therefore burnout, that is ideal. Uh, or as a line manager, putting in instrumental support to assist someone or um, teach someone a new thing, again, would help alleviate burnout. And, and you know, that is a, a difficult thing as a manager to know the, the balance of when do you need to implement emotional support, when do you need to be the person to talk that so, uh, a subordinate will talk to, and when do you need to be the person that will really instrumentally help someone get out of a situation um, that, that may be difficult for them. Or maybe yeah. not get out, but assist them through the situation, and you know everything's a learning experience at the end of the day. Yeah, and, and, and you know I, again, as as I'm, I'm sure everybody on the, on this call will recognise, and I've already you know almost read, read the bit out of the report, is that the, the environments we work in as project managers or project controls people or whatever role we are taking within within our projects, you know that projects are enormously complex difficult environments with, with, with high, you know, high, high pressure environments. And I guess what we're not saying, Tom, is that, you know, that there can't be any pressure, that there can't be any stress. That, 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 that's just unrealistic. 100%. That's not, that's, that's not yeah. real life, is it? You know, but what we've got to be aware of is when that gets too much. And I think to, in response to the question is, is have organisations recognise and, and have people equipped to recognise when burnout is starting to take hold, isn't it? 100%. 100% and you know that can be a difficult thing to recognize in in people especially you know in in the post pandemic world when everything as this is over the internet to to what extent is is someone able to tell if someone's feeling burnt out through that means and that's you know an interesting point that the majority of this research naturally has taken place pre pandemic so to better understand the, the post-pandemic working conditions and how moving to an online world in, in terms of isolation and um, work relationships, how that affects uh, feelings of accomplishment or um, yeah. how one associates to an organisation as a result of that. Yeah, and, and actually that leads really nicely onto this point that someone's made here. And actually, interestingly, I was on um, my own business's disability um, um, uh, awareness network earlier talking about this subject. But somebody said, in terms of awareness, is it, it is worth noting that neurodiversity tends to lean itself towards burnout and organisations should be ideally aware of this if they wish to support and get the best from neurodiv neurodiverse colleagues. And that I think, you know, particularly in, in again, on, in this online world that we work in you know is a really is a good point you know neurodiversity has to be something that we're, we're all much more aware of don't we in you know in, in today really 100 percent. yeah i completely agree with that so it's not it's certainly not an area i'm, I'm an expert in by any stretch of the imagination so i wouldn't like to um pretend i am but um you know again we have to you know, we have to make sure we, we recognise the, the, the strengths that, that, that different types of people you know bring to organisations, don't we? Um, speaking to someone independent who is twice removed from the situation can help immensely. It can bring fresh yeah. perspective to you and might give you the space to vent or be emotional that you might not do in front of a colleague. So maybe you've got a mentor somebody who's a bit, bit as, you, as you say, um, question asker there, um, you know, somebody who's is kind of outside of your current sphere, but, you know, somebody you trust outside of that as a mentor or someone. Yeah, what do you think, Tom? Yeah, yeah, 100% agree there. Um, 
you know, just talking things over with friends and, and using their own experience can be something that's really great. I know, I know a lot of my peers found it difficult from moving from university into the work life, uh, into the workplace and, and working out the balance there and did have a few of them coming to me, you know, sort of saying, how, how are you doing it? How are you going from um, being measured all the time in, in grades and that to, to, you know, different demands and, and it being yeah. completely different. So yeah, completely agree. Um, and, and often it, it can just be great to get an opinion of someone who's not involved in a situation at all, regardless of burnout or not, I, I firmly believe. Yeah, I, I mean, I act as a mentor to a few people and, you know, and try and do that as a two way thing as well. You know, I try and get people's um, help myself and it's a great way of doing it, I think. And um, somebody's just given a bit of advice here. When I had a surplus of work, I was advised to make light touches to each project each week. So, you know, what the, the thing to do probably is to, is to make sure you recognise you can't get involved in every single detail of a project and every single project that you maybe you're in charge of. And, you know, you just need to maybe take a bit more of a helicopter view and, and trust those individuals um, in the teams to, you know, to crack on and, and, and do the job. So, yeah, it's, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, being overloaded with work and trying to reframe is opportunity sounds like toxic positivity to me. So that's, that's a fair point. Um, um, I suppose that, that the individual who said that earlier was just, I, I guess, trying to bring a positive sense to that. But yeah, OK, that's that's you know, that's, that's a perfectly valid um, view on, on that um, and, and agree. You know, and I guess it, it just depends, again, on everyone's specific um, um, situation, doesn't it? Knowing your peers have lots of work, but when you offer to help, it is declined and your manager refuses to give you any more work. What are your ways to respond and help? So you, your peers have got lots of work. You offer to help. That's declined. So it's a difficult one to deal with, I think, Tom. Yeah, that, 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 does, that does sound it. Um... I, 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 I guess um, in that particular case, you know, it might be one of those ones where you need to go and maybe get somebody slightly independent you know somebody who's outside of the um of the situation just to get their perspective you know explain objectively you know how you're feeling about the situation that other people seem to have loads of work and you've got not quite as much and you know what what might be the reasons for that and and, and you know think of positive ways to to work around it i guess it's uh, it's a real difficult one but yeah maybe try and seek out that that trusted that trusted colleague um Completely. How can you monitor and manage burnout within yourself and your team, Tom? Any ideas? Ooh, yeah, that is that is an interesting question. I'd say doing sort of um, burnout surveys might 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 be overkill, and uh, I'd I'd say being being attentive and you know if you're managing someone, recognizing um, if they're you know, everyone's a human being at the end of the day, um, and and take that into account when when giving them work. I I, I think would be the best takeaway. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think you know we do um, in our organisation we, we have things called climate surveys, and it, you know it's sometimes quite a good thing just to do uh, get, you know get an independent climate survey done. So you can understand mm. how you know, how are people feeling, you know, what are the what are some of the things that are going on within the organisation, and you know, how do you respond to that? And this this might also relate to, to, to another. Someone said thank you to me for sharing my experience. It's no problem, you know, that I I, I have no problem sharing my my personal experience of of, of, of how I've been. And um, this individual is looking into ways of improving their resilience and setting boundaries. That's that's really good. However, you know, and they've said that the, the nervous it's seen as a, as a me problem rather than a workplace problem, and that's a very very fair point it's you know when you experience burnout anxiety whatever it's not likely to be you know mm. you you know it's probably an environmental issue and and the, and the business needs to recognize that and understand the root causes and in some respects they have a duty of care to do that and i would you know just try, try however you can to make sure that the organization is understanding that the root cause of you know why you as an individual have have got to where you've got to and and try and try and put some actions in place to make sure that doesn't happen again you know they simply they simply have a duty of care to do that and things like engagement surveys and climate surveys can help um, you know organizationally to do that i think uh, again I don't, tom i don't know if you've got anything particularly you you would suggest there 
No, I, I, I think, yeah, engagement surveys are, are probably the best means of doing that and, and working out a frequency that works works best for everyone. And, and I think uh, perhaps in, in the project lifecycle, it's an interesting one to do to um, sort of take touch base as, as the project develops. Uh, at, at what aspects is the project team more likely to experience burnout as, as it progresses through the life cycle? And I think especially as an organisation, if you can implement something like that and then take that as, as something to use when designing future projects so that, you know, at X, Y, Z point of this type of project, we're more likely to see people experiencing burnout so we can design an intervention that would, uh, you know, put more people on the, on the team, for example, just as, as, as a quick one in order to mitigate against the effects of burnout and increase longevity of that project team. That's a really good point, Tom. Surely, you know, all the projects that have been delivered in, in the world, we should know those yeah. stages of projects that where, where you know, burnout's most likely to happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, you could do so much research on, on, on that topic, and it is it's something that would be truly fascinating to look into. An individual here is often overloaded with work as they are seen as a safe pair of hands and so they're very good at the job, get more and more work to do. It's often the case, isn't it? Um, in case, um, and, and, and they feel like they're incapable of giving each project the time it deserves. Um, being told they do a good job, constantly overwhelmed and st struggling to catch up. How do you address this? Um, and it, it, again, it's a bit of a pity in organisations where good people, um, you know, can um, end up burning out because they are, you know, the, the people chuck all the work at them, don't they? Yeah. Um, it's, it, again, it's a difficult one. I think all you can ever do, uh, somebody once said to me, a problem only exists in the absence of a conversation. And sometimes if, if you don't tell somebody that you're overwhelmed, that you're overworked, then they don't know. They don't realise. They just think you're cracking on. You're doing a great job. Keep mm -hmm. doing it, man. And, and unless you actually talk to them and say, please, I'm not, you know, I'm not actually feeling that great. Um, have a conversation. And I think, you know, if there's one thing from my perspective to remember from this talk today it is um, talk to someone, really. I don't again, if you've got any build on that, Tom. No, I think that's a really good, a really good point. Uh, I, I, it's something that I was going to hit on, just feel enabled to have open conversations. Um, but yeah, I really like that, that quote, a problem only exists in the absence of conversation. And the harsh reality of it is that some conversations are easier to have than others, but um just feel enabled if there's no wrong things that that can be said if it's open and honest somebody wants a copy of your dissertation tom <laughs> yeah of course uh, yeah i've got my uh well i'll contact you those there um yeah i've got i've got that person yeah okay that's cool so you can, you can if you want a copy of tom's dissertation you can do you can you can email him there uh, a few more questions yet we've got six minutes left tom so i'll try and get us through as many as we can before uh, before one o'clock and um, within nice. my, my lifetime we have made huge strides in respect to health and safety improvements in the last 30 40 years but we have a huge way to go from a health and well-being perspective just a, a, i guess an opinion really rather than, rather than um um a question um, and one I would probably agree with, I, th I think over the last 20 years, I've seen my, in my personal view, you know, quite a, a number of good strides from a health and well-being perspective, but there is a hell of a lot to do. I, I agree with that. Again, Tom, you know, I'm 100%. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, personal experience in assisting with burnout is that individuals have to move significantly below their threshold to recover. Um, Tom, does this support your research into burnout? So if you have burnt out, you, you kind of have to go on uh, on light duties for it, if you will, for a, a period of time before you can kind of build yourself back up. Is that is that the case? Yeah, I, I'd say it, it depends on the unique circumstance of burnout. I, if someone is extremely burnt out, that that may well be the case. Um, other other aspects can can change. You know, it's it's not a it's not a binary you're either burnt out or not to to go back to the um dimensions there you know I, there's, there's been times where i've felt reduced perceived accomplishment and i guess one could say that i am burnt out but a, a conversation with a manager or a colleague has, has made me realize actually you know i am doing a lot i'm being really productive but it might just because i'm in the weeds not not seem like that at the time um 
it, 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 this is why it's so fascinating because it, it's um, the, the scope of feeling burnt out is so broad. It can be whatever you think it is. Um, yeah. And yeah, a, sometimes a timeout, a considerable amount of timeout is, is what's needed. And, and sometimes just a bit of reassurance or uh, yeah. getting an ice cream at lunch. Which sounds quite good to be fair. Yeah, I mean, my 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 view, yes, absolutely. You know, my my own experience was that I had to go into a role that wasn't as taxing for me personally for a period of time before I felt, you know, back to the old me. Yeah, it's just a fact. Is there an increased level of burnout in project managers versus other roles? And um, I, I think that actually, I've, I've put the link in in the chat. Actually, hopefully, um, you can all see that. So, so, that, so the, the APM report about burnout in project professionals. Have a, have a look at that and see what you think, um, I would say. Um, if, an, if a team member experiences burnout, it's likely the other team members may have to pick up the load. Is there a risk that this can lead to further burnout? Yes, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's um, not in the context of project management. So, you know, from an academic, academic perspective, you wouldn't take it as, as fact. But um, when studied burnout in, in healthcare professionals like doctors, nurses, etc., they did find that it was contagious among the teams that they operated in, um, which again, that, that raises the highlight of, of how to design an intervention in order to prevent. And you know what, there's there's a really good Harvard uh, Business Review article and on, on burnout and the picture that they use is um, the, the typical one of burnt matches with one removed and then the matches on from that not being burnt. Um, and sometimes that can be all it takes make of that what you will um but but yeah making sure Absolutely. it doesn't spread 100 percent. so maybe you just want to put that final slide back up again with our email addresses on tom yes. if people want to contact us but somebody's uh, again perhaps you want to just drop um, tom an email can you sign post us to an example of a of a burnout survey so i don't know tom yeah 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 we'll do there's Tom's email address. Yeah. There's my email address. We're both on LinkedIn as well, by the way. So if you want to, if you want to connect on LinkedIn, I know a couple of people have already done that with me. So more than happy to to connect uh, on LinkedIn. Um, final point: project managers can be people pleasers, and we are not great at saying no. We're not great at saying no. Sometimes you have to say no, especially when it's not your job. You know, there are other people in in the world, and uh, I think you have to be able to say no, don't you, Tom? Yeah. Completely agree there. Cool. I think that's um, there's lots of uh, thank yous in the, in, in the thing as well. So um, certainly thank you from me. Um, but I'll just let Tom have the last word. It was um, uh, Tom's um, subject, particularly in the, yeah, just leave, leave you, Tom, with the last word. No, thanks uh, everyone for attending today. It's been a been a real pleasure. And, and, and thanks, Paul, for uh, doing it with me. Great pleasure, Tom. Thank you. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Thank you very much.